today we are going to create this cloud tearing animation in after effects now it's very easy to create and this is 100 after effects no third party plugins so let's see how to make this all right so i'm in after effects and let's begin by creating a new composition let's call this one main width and height 19 20 by 1080 frame rate 30 fps duration you can pick whatever you want just click on ok now let's begin by creating a background so right click new let's add a solid just make it whatever color you want and on top of this i'm going to apply a gradient ramp let's drag it over here and let's set this to radial and i'm going to like change this color to like very dark blue now we can play around with its position to something like that yeah i think this looks good perfect now we will begin by creating our claw so for that we are going to select the pen tool make sure none of the layer is selected and we are basically going to draw a very rough shape of the claw now it might look very difficult but trust me it's very easy all you have to do is just simply click at any point you want just randomly like start creating a couple of these points just like that and at the end you will have like something like that now we can like start creating this in reverse and don't worry you can like play around with it later on as well so here you can see we have this and i think this looks good now if you want you can play around with a couple of these things and just play around with like some of these points let's just place them something around here yeah i think this looks good can have a keyframe over here or the point like that so i think this claw looks good perfect now we can select this and let's just place it in the middle of this composition using the align panel if you're not able to see the align panel then you can go to windows and from here you can enable it now here we have our claw in the same way we can like have two more claws at the adjacent so let's select this press ctrl d and on to the other ones we can like press s Let's duplicate it once again. Let's select them. Let's press S and I'm going to like scale them down. Something like that. And let's select one of them. Let's select this three and let's just place it down below. Let's select this two and we can like place it at this point like that. Now we don't want all of these claws to be like similar. So we can like select one of them. Let's select this and let's just change a couple of these points. So we can like move these two down below. Let's move this up. Let's move these up as well. Let's move them down. Again, it's completely up to you can like, we are basically creating some variations into this. And trust me, these things will like make it very amazing. So let's just create it like that. So I think this claw looks good. We can like do the same things with this one as well. Yeah, I think this looks good. Now here you can see we have these three claws. Now we are ready to animate them out. So the animation is very easy. Let's just arrange them. So this will be like at the top. This will be in the middle and this will be at the bottom. Perfect. Now the animation is quite easy. All we have to do is just pick out the point from where we want to animate them. So if you want to like animate your claws from top to bottom, then you can like move their anchor points to the top. If you want to animate them from bottom to top, then you can move their anchor point to the bottom as well. Let's select them and I'm going to like move them to the top. So select this, hold on the control key and just move their anchor points to these top locations like that. Let's select this. Let's move it. Perfect. So here we have these. Now we can select them. Let's press S to scale them up. Let's add a keyframe. So this is going to be a final position. Let's go to somewhere around, let's say five or six frames only. And in the beginning, I'm going to like set all of these to zero. Perfect. Now you can see we have these claws growing in, but we don't want to like see them. So we can like go to a little bit ahead somewhere around here. Let's add like keyframes for them. Let's go to somewhere around four. Let's add keyframes from for them as well. Now we have these as well. Perfect. Now, instead of like having them grow, we can have a little bit of stop motion sort of thing. So we can select all the keyframes, right click, toggle, hold keyframe. Now, if I press play, you can see we have all of these claws coming in at once. So I'm happy with the animation. Now let's stylize them as well. Now I'm going to like apply gradient ramp to these and let's just change the ramp to let's keep it somewhere around. Let's just set this to red only and this portion we can like make it yellow. like that again it's completely up to you. you can like play around with their positions 
now we can copy this gradient and just paste it onto these other layers as well like that you can play around with their positions however you want so i think this looks good again the color choice is completely up to you perfect so here we have these three claws now the real trick of making these animations look better is by simply adding more and more details that will like really make your scene out so let's add some highlights to these so let's select all of them these and first i'm going to like change their color let's make them yellow now i'm going to select all of them let's press ctrl d and let's select the bottom ones which we have over here and i'm going to like apply fill to all of these let's apply fill and let's drag it onto them and i'm going to change their color to white Let's copy this and just paste it onto these alternate layers. Let's quickly change their colors as well. Let's change them white because we're going to like move them a little bit outwards. Let's select them and let's go to this point. Now what we are going to do is we're going to like simply pick a couple of these points and let's just extend them like that so that we have some white outlines sort of like these outside. So here you can see we have some white outlines and let's do the same thing over here as well. Now we have added these highlights and you can already say that these looks beautiful. So before we proceed, if you enjoy my work and you want to support me, then you can check out my Patreon page. Over there you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on Patreon. So make sure to check it out. Link for that is in the description. Now let's continue. Now our next step is to like have some drop shadows to this. So for that we can select this top one. Let's select this one which is this bigger one and let's right click go to layer style let's add some inner shadow and right away you can see we are able to see some things and let's just go inside the properties and i'm going to we can play around with this size if you want to like have these very soft like that uh, or you can like make the size lower if you want to have them harsher and we can play around with the distance as well let's keep it somewhere around here yeah i think this looks good now we can like simply copy this in a shadow let's press ctrl c to copy them and just paste them onto all of these layers these yellow ones like that so now here you can see we have all of these claws and they have this very nice shadow perfect now we can have like more details to this so we can have like some smaller details like around here and there so for that we can select one of these layers let's select this one press ctrl d to duplicate this and let's change its color so let's make this pink and on this one we can like change the color to let's say yellow to both of these now we can select this press u and let's remove the scale for this one and we can like simply move it to this side and let's press s and i'm going to like make it really really small something like that we can probably like get rid of the this layer style as well so let's select this press curve delete to remove this now all we have to do is just simply move them to somewhere around this point now we can play around with its rotation something like that we are basically adding some smaller details around these something like that now if you are not happy then you can like uncheck these values and we can like make them really thin let's rotate it i think this looks good let's press s again we can like do the same scaling thing let's press s let's go to the beginning let's add a keyframe let's move this to this point so in the beginning we can like set this value to zero and let's set this to zero as well so now you can see our line will grow like that again we can do the same thing let's add keyframes over to these points let's select them right click let's toggle hold keyframe now here you can see we have these like small details over here as well again it's completely up to you can like go completely crazy and just place them here and there now we can select these press ctrl d to duplicate them let's place them at few different points let's place one over here let's press ctrl d let's place one to this way as well perfect now it's completely up to you can play around with the size or like location however you want you can play around with the structures let's have a little bit of variations so like that yeah i think these looks good now you can see that all of these are animated at once perfect now we can have like more details to this so by simply adding some texture inside of these layers so let's quickly do them so in order to create the texture all we have to do is just simply select the rectangle tool and i'm going to like make sure none of the layer is selected i'm going to like simply 
click and drag to create a square. I'm holding the shift key to create this perfect square. Now we can press R. Let's rotate them by 45 degree, something like that. Now inside this, we can like go and let's go to add. Let's add a repeater. Let's go inside this and under the copies, I'm going to set this to 50 and let's go inside the transform and I'm going to like position them very close to each other, something like that. Let's select them and let's search for size as well because we want these to be like very tiny. Something like that looks good. Now we can go back to the. Now we can go back to the repeater and let's go inside this and I'm going to like again lower down their position so that these are very close. Now we can select this repeater, press Ctrl D to duplicate it and let's go to the repeater too and under the transform instead of position this I'm going to like set this to zero or we can copy this set this to zero and change the the y value to this value so that now you can see we have these dots now we can like simply select them and you can use the arrow keys to move them here and there now if I move it to the top somewhere around here you can see that these are like covering our claws which is actually perfect now if you think that this is big then we can again play around with this size to make them like really small like that now on top of this we can apply fill effect let's change their color so i'm going to like pick a very dark color and let's change the blending mode to multiply and after that you can play around with these colors as well however you want so i'm going to like keep them somewhere around here yeah, i think these looks good perfect now we don't want them to be like visible throughout these we can like have some little bit of chunks here and there so for that we can like select this and let's duplicate it three times because we have three claws and i'm going to like place one of them at top of these each so let's place one over here let's place one to this one and let's place one here now we can select one of them let's select this and which is on top of this claw so we can select this now i'm going to like select the ellipse tool and i'm going to like change this to mask instead of shape so if you are over here now it will create shape but if you click on this now it will start creating mask now we can select this and we can like just use the pen tool to create some mask like that now we can like hide these so that we are not able to see them throughout this now since we have created this mask we can like double click to select it and just place it wherever you want you can like rotate it or like whatever you want to do it now we can select this press f let's have some feathering so you can see we have these feathering out nicely now we don't want this pattern to be like visible outside this claw so for that we can like simply change the track mat all we have to do is just simply select this layer and change select this pick whip and let's select this one now you can see that it will hide this layer so we can like make it appear by simply clicking on that now you can see that all of these are visible through these and we can like have some feathering on to this so let's select this press f let's have some feathering perfect now you can see we have these faded as well now the best thing about this technique is that you can like select the this mask tool let's change this to mask only and make sure that this layer is selected now you can like create a mask over here as well Let's select this press f and let's feather this one out as well like that so now you can see we have all of these very nice texture now we can play around with its position let's place it over here now in the same way you can like keep on adding these texture onto these as well let me just quickly do that so now we have added the texture onto all of these layers. Now our next step is to like have our text and we can like animate everything out. So for that let's select the text tool. Just click and type whatever you want. I'm going to type Panther. Let's just align it over here. And I'm using this splash pleating font, but it's completely up to you. You can use whatever font you want. Let's make this anchor point in the center. Let's press S and I'm going to like quickly scale this up. Something like that. Let's place this down below all of these layers nice so you can see that all of these are like moving throughout these now we can select these press and let's move them like a little bit far away let's scale this down and there is one more thing the best thing about this technique is that if i add a null object i can like select all of these layers except the text one 
and just parent it to this null now i can like easily rotate this clock to like animate it from whatever direction we want like that so now you can see that if i press play the claw will be like animated through that direction i can like place it wherever i want i can like move it to this side i can move it to that side again it's completely up to you can like play it with however you want now if we can have some shake as our claw is revealing so let's go to somewhere around one second we can like make all of these layers like come in something like that now in order to add the shake it's actually quite easy all we have to do is just simply let's right click let's add go to new let's add an adjustment layer and let's place this on top of all of these layers and on this one we are going to apply transform effect let's drag it over here and also i'm going to apply a slider controller let's search for slider controller and let's select this press ctrl d to duplicate this because we need two instances now in order to add the shake effect we can use the position property so hold on the alt key or option key on mac and click on this now it will give you this location where you can type the expression so we're going to use this simple wiggle expression let's type wiggle and in the curly braces i'm going to like first pick whip this slider control which is at this one like that now you can add a comma now pick with the second slider controller like that now if we let it go you can see we have linked all of these properties to these slider controllers and we can easily animate them out so now you can like have keyframes for these let's select them let's press u now let's move like a little bit ahead where we have these coming in and we can like change their values so i'm going to like set the top value to something like 5 and the bottom value 50 let's move like a little bit ahead somewhere around here and i'm going to like set both of these values to zero now if i press play you can see we have this very nice shake now what these values are doing is basically this is defining the frequency so if i set this to like let's say 100 now it will like shake very vigorously and this is defining like how much we want to shake like how far we want this shake to move so if i set this to like 500 you can see that it will go crazy like that now I'm going to like set these values to 5 and 50 like that so I think this looks good now you'll notice one more thing that we are able to see these black regions which we can easily fix by simply applying a motion tile effect let's drag and let's place it on top of all of these layers and I'm going to set the output width to 150 and output height to 150 as well make sure that mirror edges is checked now you can see that we won't see any kind of these black outlines perfect so here we have this again you can like go crazy with these and let's set this to 100 now you can see that it will have like more shake but for this one let's keep it to 50 only now here we have everything and in order to make this like really stand out we can have some motion blur so just simply select and let's drag the motion blur onto all of these layers now make sure that this is also checked now if i press play you can see that it will have like this really nice motion blur and this will really enhance the look of your animation so this is before and after just like that now in the beginning we can like have some simple reveal for the text as well so for that let's create a solid and let's just make it whatever color you want let's search for fractal noise let's drag it over here let's increase the contrast and i'm going to animate its brightness so let's set this to negative value so that it is completely dark let's add a keyframe let's go to somewhere around one second let's set this value and i'm going to like set this to bright then it's completely white let's just place this on top of this text layer and i'm going to change this track mat now instead of track mat i'm going to set this to luma mat by simply clicking on this once again now in the beginning you can see that it will be hidden and as our text is revealing we will have this coming out finally so this is how you can create these kind of animated clause animation with some really nice shake and all so i hope you learned something from this video and the project files for this tutorial is available on patreon so if you're supporting me over there then you can download it from there and if you're not then you might consider it because you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on patreon so make sure to check it out link for that is in the description now with that being said my name is abhishek and i'll see you in the next one